anybody wants to bring some noise, bring it. We are simply the best. Sounds wicked, bro. How fast do you think that was right there? It's doing change. Doing change. Sound like good. What do you typically rev these things to? Or what can it rev to? It could rev all the way to 15.2. Nice. Felt good? Yeah, it felt good. It spun a little when it took off. Yeah. And now it's on, uh, it's on MR12, the yeah, race fuel? MR12. You can smell it. What's the basic rundown on the bike for people that don't know the bike? Big motor, full carbon, lightweight, Big cams, everything as big as it could probably go, uh, with the exception of the bottom end. Uh, MR12 bike, 910s gear, as much as it could handle, being home motor. Yeah. Nothing, no power adder, no major out of control type of deal. It's just, it's a basic bike for what it is. Basic bike, yeah. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> for the most part, we will push it to like half mile with any of those power out of bikes or or turbo bikes half mile we can't push it past that because it'll outpower us and we'll be dead in the water but half mile with the ET has and the way it performs from the bottom end I would say without a doubt we could put a good stretching on, on some of the high power out of cars and bikes the first thing I see on all your bikes no mirrors I gotta add everybody always says like is it worth it the mirrors make yeah, that big of a difference worth it. It's not about the drag it creates, it's the vibration it leads. Once you start going high speeds, it creates a vibration. You know, and it, it distorts every everything. little bit every little bit helps. Yeah, every little bit helps yeah. and so you guys have basically carbon everything here yeah. I see. Carbon wheels, carbon bodywork, carbon fender. Everything's lighter. Everything's lighter. Every every ounce you guys were trying to save on this. Right. Thing. Yeah. We're we're in the low three hundreds with it. Versus wow. everybody else, it's like mid 300s to high 300s. Wow, so talk about really power to weight. Yeah, so we try to keep our power to weight in the vicinity. We like to call it a square box. As long as the numbers stay close together, we know it's going to be a good turnout. So that's where where we try to stay at. We try yep. to stay close as possible to the power so it's not way off. For the most part, with them, it's like seven horsepower. Seven pounds equal a horsepower, so we try to bring it close together to see what. For sure, for sure. Dude, incredible bike, man. It sounds awesome. Going by, it's just that grunt that it has. I mean, yeah. it sounds it sounds wicked, man. Originally, we didn't think it was going to turn out this big and this good. Put everybody on something that we didn't really think it was going to do. Once it did it, we were like, Sh we're already here. Might as well just keep pushing it to see how far it will go with it. Yeah. It went further than we thought it was gonna go. We never really thought that it was gonna be like the number one thing out there. Now I gotta ask, no gear. What is that? Is that a weight thing? Is it an aerodynamics thing? It's preference, well, it's, comfortability. It's a, bit of, a bit of both. Because once you put the gear on, 
it kind of limits to how much you can tug and which ways you swing around because the, the wind will push you around with the gear big time. Sure. You know, so... So when you're top, yes, when you're racing top speed, so, arrows... Right. Like, yeah. Everybody's like, oh, the squid this, and why are they not wearing gear? And is the gear really going to make a difference? The gear is really going to make a difference. So it's basically, the reasoning is the hyper-competitive of the sport down here. Right. Because so, if you're wearing gear and somebody else isn't, yeah, you, you have that sure, edge. you have that edge. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yo, 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 Why you let Bubu take the hit on you, though? No, I did it. This, and, and bro, it goes woo, 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 woo. It's slow. <laughs> it's not like before, bro. It's like, let's make a bike that does everything so anybody can ride it. I, with him, at least faster. For the reason, como la moto no se quiere levantar con él, it goes forward. Como ellos, since it wants to come up, it cuts it. Woo. Even with the traffic control? <laughs> with everything. I said, oh, oh, oh. You're going to see me bouncing on this. <laughs> like I'm driving a freaking dirt bike. What did it drag you? Oh, oh, oh. 520, 60. My Beamer went 380 bone stock, bro. I, I, well, I said 6 seconds. I was close. What was it, 520? 528. The fastest. My name is Nelson Pupo, and we own the fastest naturally aspirated Jixer 1000 on the street right now. As most of you guys know, the bike is pretty tough competitor out there. We're talking about a fully built bike from the floor up, wheels, bodywork, engine, arms, suspension, everything. Our engine builder, it's Lee's, at Lee's Performance. Um, we have been using carbonin for a long time for our bodywork. Engine wise, we're not the biggest motor out there, possibly the fastest one out there. Not the biggest horsepower either. Strongly think the lightest one, uh, sitting at really low 300s in weight class, have a really light uh, jockey as well. We're somewhere in the mid to high 200s in power. Uh, all motor, 
we're somewhere I would say in the mid range in size on the motor. I'd like to say for the most part, the combination of the machine and the jockey puts us where we are right now. Currently running a uh, Penske rear shock, dual adjustable. For the front suspension, we have a rebound stock setup, lighter on the oils. Uh, we're running lightweight Behringer brakes, which are vacuum sealed for instant release retract. Um, we currently run MR12 for fuel, which is the most common thing out there for everybody. Makes the best power on it at the same time keeps it kind of safe and cool. We are full carboned out from head to toe. Uh, so we have a really light aluminum subframe. We run no headlight, no tail light, limited on the harness as much as we can. Uh, single sided brakes, no rear brakes, aluminum sprockets. We run a light, really light chain, no O-ring to minimize the drag. For a tune wise, I have it in house. Uh, originally tuned by Lee, we kind of moved that all around. We had my, my boy Elvin redo everything, which is our PGR tuner for the most part. The bike don't go no higher than 218, which a lot of guys out there go faster than that, but we get there sooner. So it's not about the biggest mile an hour don't always win. Whoever makes it there, it's got the trunk. We've had the bike for about, say, three years now. Been beat once from 16 races that we've had. So we've, for the most part, I would like to say we're the top dog in the food chain right now. We've gone through nitrous boosters, turbo boosters, all motor boosters. The 1000 uh, class, how we jumped into it from a boosa standpoint was because our BUSA kind of outdid everything else out there and we needed more competition. With the Jigster, we still kind of carry the same ideology. We uh, determined that the weight was gonna be our biggest help and factor in it. Having one of the greatest guys out there driving right now, it's a big, big influence. A lot of guys out there like to uh, say, oh, we got this and that bike is nothing, and yeah, we got bigger motors than him, and we got bigger power than him, but it's not all about the power. The bike is usually a nine-tenths of a mile race. Occasionally, we do half mile. Uh, it's an acceleration bike, it's very fast. It goes in the mid twos for uh, draggy times. We uh, could gear it to go endless amount of miles in the distance we do, but for our benefit, to get there faster, we have a gear to where it don't go no faster than that. Nine tenths racing. We would uh, roll into it at 40 mile an hour to uh, whatever we make it through at the nine tenths. A lot of the northern people didn't used to do it. Now they're getting into it. A lot of people travel down to do it here because we have the best spots the best locations to do what we're doing right now. 40 mile an hour start, rolling in first gear, go through it, balls deep, as far as it goes. Whomever makes it basically through the finish line first wins, it really don't matter mile an hour, it really don't matter anything else at that point. First to the finish, it's where, where all goes. Nine tenths and the whole tuning and getting it to work the way we got it to work. We've uh, run many methods of uh, calculating, estimating, guesstimating for the most part. With the evolution of the Draghi lately, uh, we're able to bring it down significantly compared to how it was before. We've been doing this for a very long time to where before we would have to compare it to a decent bike next to us and play through that and kind of guess where we were, 
compared on 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 what the next person it's capable of doing or what the next person it's it's done before now with the draggy and all the electronics that we have being able to log the bike log the time log the acceleration all the different methods now that has made it a bit easy to get it to where it is but a bit complicated to squeeze a little extra out of it to get it to where it is now it's eating a motor already once dialing it in it ate a motor i figure to dial it in the cost of a motor it's a price we could pay to be uh competitive with everybody else i am sure a lot of people out there might say oh if you went through a motor just to set it up how good is it it's really good right now it's it's at a point where if you haven't come as close as we are to destroying or grenading a motor you're not going to be close you're not even going to be a good race a lot of people out there they say oh we'll slap things together and it'll just go <laughs> it's not going to go that easy it's not going to be that simple it's going to take mad amount of hours mad amount of research changing things around trying things you thought were even insane to try things that you never thought will even make the slightest difference from weight to trying things, moving weight around on the bike, putting weight to the front, putting weight to the back, lowering the center of gravity. A whole lot of things come into play. How we came about the bikes? At first, it was all just about riding, cruising, going out with my friends. We happened to run into this uh, hidden races. At some point, we were invited. Uh, we came by, we don't really, we were just there spectating. But we ended up doing a quick pull for some reason. And uh, that's how it really clipped. It went from there. We were disappointed at that point. And we said, Hey, if we do it on cars, why can't we do it on bikes? That's how it all kind of emerged and how we go from both worlds. Uh, have my share of fast cars. I have a 71 Datsun, 1400 horses. I have a currently own a GTR, 1300 horses. I have a Supra, somewhere in the high levels of uh, 1300 horses as well. And the bikes kind of uh, merged with us. Us having uh, the knowledge in the cars and the whole racing ability type of deal kind of give us a, a bit of an edge on how we uh, got the bike to work and perform the way it performs. Jockey-wise, uh, a lot of the guys out there uh, say, oh no, I have so-and-so to jump on it. There's a lot of guys out there in the jockey thing, but there's a lot of things that go down before you could consider yourself a jockey. Like me and my guy, we have a history. From me wanting to choke him to uh, becoming closest of friends. We used to run each other back in the days. We uh, came close about, say about 10 years ago. I kind of molded him a bit because he was wild in his whole uh, young entourage he had going on. Now I could just put him on the bike and be, go for a feel. He'll come back, give me a lot of data, a lot of uh, things that he feels. I'll go out there, we'll go together, I'll watch him ride and tell him, you need to move here, you need to move there, you need to... Things that only two jockeys can put together. Together, we made the team that we are right now. PGR, which is Elvin, Johan, uh, Chris, uh, Martin, Andy, uh, Will, you know, we come together, Yata, Carlito. Once we go out there and you see us dressed up, you know it's gonna be good. Uh, a lot of people try to cheat us out of races. A lot of people try to do the whole, let's flag the race type of deal now, which has come kind of like a trend, thinking that they're gonna have the edge. You're going to have no edge, bro. We are simply the best.